stay with us. Now it's for time for that interview. I promised at the beginning of this bulletin with Naftali Mwangi, the CEO of High Soap Properties Limited. And we'll get to talk about all the things that businesses can do to ensure they thrive during difficult times of doing business. Naftali Mwangi, thank you so much for, for, being, for being here and for allowing us to do this interview. So let's first start with what does High Soap Properties Limited do and what exactly is your role there? Uh, thank you so much, Ongoe, um, for having me here. Uh, my name is Mwangi Naftali. At High Soap, we are a real estate company. And what we do, we are in the business of settling Kenyans in Kenya. And yes, that's our business. Uh, predominantly land, uh, apartments, and uh, bungalows. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the COVID-19 season saw so a lot of businesses suffer, some closed shop, that uh, even after economy started picking up, some of them are not able to revive themselves and get back to where they were as high soap. Were you affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? In what ways were you affected? Um, uh, actually, from 2020 up to uh, where we are right now, we've been in a very bumpy business environment, very volatile. I remember we started with COVID-19. Everyone was affected. So there's no one industry that can tell you it was not affected. Because what happens is if incomes, family incomes and individual incomes are affected, they affect uh, uh, buyer power. And, and that is where businesses, uh, I mean, uh, hold their, their, their lines. Um, you know, 2020 COVID, um, uh, 2020 this year, uh, the Ukraine war, and then next, we are getting into an election. And you know, in Kenya, we have realized that whenever there is an election, uh, the business curve goes down. There is no good performance. But uh, uh, Kenyans are known to be resilient. So much of the businesses, yes, about in number, numerically, about 500 companies closed, middle, uh, small and middle, and, and middle income companies. Uh, but there are those companies that thrive, there are those industries that thrived. When people were in the lockdown, there are companies, especially in food processing and all that, they thrived. So we, we, we are a stealth economy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I love that you've talked about the elections. We are about 17 days to the election. So as an expert in properties, do you think right now is the right opportunity for someone uh, who wants to invest in property to buy land? Or is it after the elections that people should begin buying land? Any three tips you have for people who are looking, for, looking into uh, investing in property? Um, this is the right time to buy property. Why? Because there's an oversupply. Many people are selling properties. The prices are down. What is going to happen uh, historically, immediately after an election, uh, prices go up because demand goes, goes up. So especially that this, this particular election is, is, is more peaceful uh, compared to, to, to the past. So immediately after elections, and remember there are budgets to be put in, uh, in, uh, in the economy. Um, there are people with uh, these manifestos to be... To be, to be proven. So prices are going to shoot up. So this is the right time to buy because this, at, at this time, the consumer has a, uh, has a power to negotiate. Many companies are willing to negotiate, yeah, because there is no, there's not much business right now. So I hope our viewers at home heard that correctly, that right now is the best time to, to buy property for those who are invested in uh, investing in property. So maybe we can also look at, do you have any strategies in place to ensure you're able to kind of maneuver, for example, if the elections don't go as well, we are praying for peaceful elections, but do you have any strategies in place to ensure you, uh, you have a shock absorber, for example? Um, at ISO Properties, what we do is um, uh, close to 40 to 45% 40 of our business comes from diaspora. And um, uh, especially the U.S., the U.K., and even the Middle East markets. So that has helped us to, to, to hold in. And, and uh, so many people, especially right now, are buying. I can tell you for a fact, if you buy right now and sell in the next, uh, in the next three, four months, properties will grow at a minimum of 20%. Look at the dollar right now, uh, the, Kenya, the Kenya shilling against the dollar. So we are at the lowest we have ever been, at 121, okay, against the dollar. So uh, immediately after elections, there's going to be stability, okay? Even if it doesn't go lower, there is going to be stability. So this is the right time for investors to buy, mm -hmm. yes. 
Not many businesses are able to say what uh, you said, that uh, most of their clients are from the diaspora. Some are just based in here. So any tips you might have for startup companies in ways that they can position themselves to ensure that, uh, for example, high cost of living does not affect them, a situation like the COVID-19 uh, pandemic does not affect them? We, we have a very positive outlook um, currently and even going into the future. Um, even in domestic consumption, um, there is a good number of people. Let me, let me tell you something. Uh, for the last 10 years, 15 to 10 years, Kenya has uh, moved from uh, what is called the informal economy. We are, more than, we, we are an informal economy. By informal economy, I mean uh, we no longer depend on what we used to call permanent and pensionable uh, uh, employments. Uh, the permanent and pensionable uh, employees used to support so many businesses. But as time, uh, with time, we have become what we call an informal uh, economy. What I mean is that it is the small businesses in this country, the SMEs, that have held this country together. And you know, domestically, um, those were not affected as much. If you look at uh, many huge companies, they shared a lot of uh, employment uh, in, in, the, in the volatile time from 2019 up to now, you know. But so many people are pushed into business. Look at what internet has done in this country. Internet alone has created more than a million opportunities of people supporting their livelihoods in this country. Because in Africa, apart from South Africa, we are the best in terms of internet consumption. Yeah? Uh, we are the best, actually, uh, one of the best in the whole world in terms of money remittances. I mean, PESA, a, a, a beautiful flagship. Go anywhere in the, in the world. They know us with that name. So that has supported a lot of businesses, and that is what I would term as an informal economy, and that is where we are headed to. Mm -hmm. So businesses that depended on that, on uh, incomes from that economy, they have done well. And I will call upon businesses to, that is where we are looking at. Uh, days are gone when uh, businesses would, uh, would survive based on what is called permanent and pensionable businesses. Look at the insurance uh, industry. Uh, it has struggled a long period of time because, and, and the, the penetration is 3% uh, in Kenya. Why? Because of high dependency on what is called the conservative, the conservative economy. Uh, the, the pensions, the government employment, and all that. Mm -hmm. This country has been held by SMEs and the informal economy, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I might be among the very few Kenyans who feel like uh, buying, la uh, buying uh, an apartment, buying a, uh, an already built house is better than buying land and developing it, uh, building a house. So maybe you can advise our, our audience what is the best thing to, to do, buying land and building or buying property that's already been built? At Heiso Properties, we, we have a research and development department. And basically, we want to know why are people buying land? Uh, why are people buying apartments? 60% um, of people buying into properties, they buy for what is called land banking. They are buying to hold so that they can sell in the future. If I have some 2 million bob, I better put it in land because it's going to grow. Land in Kenya has grown at between 35 to 40%. Call it 30 to 40% uh, in the last uh, 10 years. So... Two million shillings will be better than putting that, the same amount in a bank. So, there are people who would buy land for construction and, and, and settling. Let me tell you something on going. Mm -hmm. um, home ownership is the first biggest step towards financial stability, towards financial freedom. And um, the country, the uptake and the ownership of, house, of houses, especially in the urbans, and, and the peri-urban peri areas has been very low in, the, in, in this country. Mm -hmm. I can give you numbers. Uh, from independence, 1963, to today, banks across, we are talking about more than 55 years, have dispensed only 25,000 mortgages in a period of 50 years. So if you look at it, you will realize there was a problem somewhere, either in access of money or even the affordability of our interest rates. But there are so many circles. Uh, at ISOP, we have got a partner. We will uh, get you the land, and we also have another step called turning plots into homes. And that is what we are going to do in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every plot that we have sold, we want to turn it into homes. So 
We have signed deals, financial deals. We have the expertise of construction. Today, today we, la we uh, launched 10 houses in Akuru. And these are for customers who bought and they didn't know how, one, they don't have the expertise of building. Building is a headache uh, for so many people. Uh, you don't want to build, you don't know, you don't know how to deal with the fundi. Yeah, so we are going to take care of all that uh, hula balu around there. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a whole 360. Uh, for someone who wants an already uh, finished apartments, we've got apartments in Nairobi and, uh, and uh, on Kembu Road and also on Limuru Road. But the majority of Kenyans, we have realized, are moving towards what is called gated communities, where I own my bungalow, I own my three-bedroom, I own my four-bedroom, and I have a space that I can grow up uh, my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, your business has been thriving. You've won a few awards this year. Maybe you could talk, talk about that and maybe what specific things you've done to enable you win the, the awards you've won. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for the award. Um, I was uh, awarded the CEO of the year in the SME sector. And he, this one, uh, it's a forum called the National Business Leadership Awards. Uh, HISOP was uh, awarded the COYA Awards. That is a company of the year. Um, Thriving is a big word, okay? Because uh, what is thriving? You can thrive uh, financially. You can also thrive by the number of uh, employment, right? the job opportunities that you have created. So the nomination was looking at so many factors. How many, how many people have been uh, employed by HISOP in the last, especially in the volatile time? And number two, have they grown in terms of revenue? Um, are they compliant in terms of these laws? So it is usually a signature and a symbol of, uh, of compliance, business compliance. Business comes with, uh, with ethics and compliance. Uh, we're complying with all the other stakeholders. And I think that is why we won. And uh, I dedicate this one to our customers for believing in us. And my colleagues uh, in Nairobi, uh, we are at International House. In Akuru, we are at Tower One. And we also have a house in, uh, in, in, in Old Kalau, a place called Nyandarwa. In Nyandarwa, a place called Old Kalau, mm -hmm. called Hysop House. So all that, uh, believing in ourselves, we have got one value, that we are ready to pay the cost of ambition. We are ambitious. We are ready to pay the cost of that ambition. Um, and, our cost, uh, and, our, and our business is trust. So can we, can we pay the cost of ambition uh, ethically? So, and... Thankfully, we thank God so, so much that someone was watching and they thought these people uh, um, should be awarded mm -hmm. yes, or deserve an accolade. Congratulations. Asante. Uh, maybe your parting shot? Um, at HISOP, we, we have grown, uh, especially in like seven counties uh, in, in business, uh, started a beautiful program called Zawadi Mzazi. Can I tell you numbers? Um, eight out of ten people want to settle their parent in one way or the other. Either upgrade the house they are they're in or settle them in a different area. Um, we have got a great program called Zawadi Mzazi owned by the company, patented by the company where we help build houses for your, for your, for your family and for your parents and, and we surprise them big time. Uh, if you go to social media, you'll see uh, a serious, serious, great movement. So my parting shots would be, thank you so much for hosting me here. Um, Hope is, is, is a respected, uh, great uh, media. And I um, would welcome you to come to HISOP. Okay. I know you know about us. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get into land banking and own properties in this country. I hope uh, as we come, you'll be giving us discounts upon discounts. Of course, mm -hmm. I told you, this is the time for discounts. Mm -hmm. At this time, customers have power. Mm -hmm. They are able to say, you know what? Things are not very good. Give me, give me time. Give me flexibility. Give me a lower price. Mm -hmm. So it's a great pleasure, and um, I'm so grateful being here. Thank you so much for coming awesome. and for allowing us to have this interview. That has been Naftali Mwangi from Properties Limited, and we've been discussing all about properties and ways that businesses can thrive during difficult times of doing business. Let's go for another break here on Hope TV News Watch. We'll be back with the sports news.